good day, Fitzroy. Isn't it amazing in our new world that on a bank holiday weekend, where we've been given permission to head off to the coast for the first time in a while, that even if you're on the north coast, or even you're in Strangford Loch, or wherever you are today, that you can still worship together with other Fitzers and beyond on our online service. So wherever you're watching or listening from today, it is good to have you with us. We are not going to do many announcements today at all, just to say book in for next Sunday's gathering if you wish. Uh, Brent did this morning's before you're listening to this service. Ian Hart's doing next week and Brent's doing the online next week because I am at the coast and I have the novels piled up and I am going to take a rest and I am thankful for it and I hope many of you will be able to take a rest too. Let's be still for a moment. Lord, we pray that we will not be just watching a screen for the next 40 to 45 minutes, but that somehow you will take what we have planned and put together on this screen and by your Holy Spirit, you will make it come alive in our lives to reach into our lives and to speak to us about the challenges that we're going through and the excitement of following you that's possible. We pray, Lord, that we will hear your Spirit speak to us. Oh, Lord, encourage us, inspire us, and if you have to, correct us. We pray that we would know your love. In Jesus' name, amen. What gift of grace is Jesus my reward?
to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me until I stand with joy. Father God, we come to you today and give you thanks that in all we are going through, we have confidence that you love each one of us, understand each one and are with us. Paul encourages Timothy to pray for all people, for those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. So, Father God, we pray for Prime Minister Boris Johnson and our Westminster government. For our First and Deputy First Ministers at Stormont, Arlene Foster and Michelle O'Neill, and for all the MLAs. Lord, in the face of so many disputes and within party disagreements, we pray that you would bring order and good governance. We ask that our politicians would govern with honesty and integrity, that they would seek to promote policies that bring fairness and justice for all sections of society. We pray, Father, that you would guide the DUP as they select a new leader and that the parties in our assembly would seek fresh ways to work together for the good of all. Lord God, we thank you for the scientific community and for the extraordinary progress that has been made regarding the understanding and treatment of COVID-19 and the development of vaccines. We acknowledge how privileged we are living in a rich country with access to first-class health care, and we pray for the people of India as they face this horrendous wave of the pandemic. We are sorry that our government has in recent months chosen to cut the UK's aid budget and we ask for a change of heart. Lord, we ask that you would challenge the UK government and governments across the international community to increase in generosity in the provision of assistance and the sharing of resources with India and other nations in crisis. Father, we thank you for Steve and the family. As he and Jana spend the next week in Ballycastle, we ask that you would give them good rest and refresh them physically, emotionally and spiritually. Guide Fitzroy Lord as we seek to respond wisely to the changing Covid situation and build us together as a community of your people who seek to share your love. In, in his, his name, name we, we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah.
reading is taken from John chapter 15 verses 1 to 18. The vine and the branches. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he trims clean so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. 
Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. Okay. 
this week's sermonic drama? Well, as a matter of fact, there was one. On Friday morning, I was uh, wanting to get recorded early because I wanted to take the permission that Robin Swan had given me and Janice to get to the coast for our first break in Bally Castle for uh, well over nine months. And we were looking forward to that so much that I wanted to record. And as I was pondering the sermon uh, not long before I did it, I kind of felt that the lectionary reading probably needed to roll over into next week's. Kind of hoping that Brent's not going to use the lectionary, or even if he did use the lectionary, that he would preach from a different angle than myself. And as I was thinking about this, I got a text just as I was pondering it from Boyd McDowell, who you heard doing the reading earlier on. And Boyd was saying that Willie Otterson, who's this week's technical dude, um, had told him that he'd got the reading wrong, that uh, I had asked for uh, John 15, 1 to 8, but he'd, re- he'd actually read John 15, 1 to 8. And I suddenly went, the mistakes were ahead of us because this reading needed longer than the lectionary one I had suggested and my text error has helped. Anyway, enough of the drama. The context of John 15, of course, is in these what we call um, the farewell discourses of Jesus. I suppose you could say that Luke, the Gospel according to Luke, the travel narratives that we looked at during Lent that took us oh, through 10 chapters from Luke 9 right through to when Jesus arrives in Jerusalem. And we picked up all the lessons that Jesus was teaching the disciples before he would be taken up. Um, I suppose the Gospel according to John squeezes those in um, to these four very intense, intimate, conversational pieces between Jesus and his disciples. And we're in the middle of one of those just right here. From 13 to 17, the farewell discourses were at 15. And there's a little bit of a reprise. That's why we put uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want in for a second Sunday. Kind of takes us back to last Sunday and that idea of Jesus as the good shepherd. And uh, it's wonderful this week's worship Uh, There's three of the songs that were recorded in the live gathering last week and we hope that we might be able to hybrid those as we go. You'll get a little bit of the live gathering in the next week, etc. So the reprise, and the reprise I think is important because some of the things we learned about the shepherd, staying close to the shepherd, being guided and led by the shepherd, we're beginning to see another angle of that, another angle of a same similar truth here in John 15. It's almost as if I was thinking about it this week that Jesus did a lot of thought for the days. Oh, I've got this message I want to share with the disciples. How will I put it? I'll tell you how I'll put it. Because of the agrarian nature of uh, the the surrounding areas in which the disciples and Jesus were uh, doing their teaching and living together, uh, we'll, uh, we'll say, I'll I'll use the illustration um, and go for three minutes on I am the Good Shepherd. And actually another good one would be like the vine. Um, uh, uh, Like I am the vine, remain in me and I will remain in you. So we're into another thought for the day from Jesus. And his illustration is wonderful. Uh, He is the vine. The father is the farmer. He is the vine. We are the branches. And he says to us, remain in me. Abide in me. Stay close in was the shepherd's idea of safety and guidance. I think the idea of the vine is when we abide in the vine, when we become branches of the vine, that we get the energy and the identity of the vine. We're grafted in. Grafted in in such a way that we become like the vine itself. We're branches of Jesus. We will begin to find our identity in Jesus. The things that we begin to do will be coming from the very source of Jesus. And our energy will come from there as well. In a COVID-19 year, to uh, know Jesus as the good shepherd and to stay in close for safety and guidance is a great illustration. But to be part of the vine and find the energy and the identity of Jesus through this time is another great illustration. And of course we go back to the farewell discourses because this is what Jesus has been trying to teach the disciples for a chapter or two now. Chapter 14 that for me 
Uh, it's just I just love it more, a wee bit more than I do 15. But in chapter 14 and verse 20, Jesus said, On that day you will realize. What will we realize? I am in my Father. You are in me. And I am in you. There's this sense of togetherness, of bonded, of abiding, of being grafted. Jesus is saying, I am linked into the Father and you are linked into me. There's this moving amongst each of us, all one. Eugene Peterson, I uh, when I go through a week like this, I actually read Eugene Peterson's message version uh, to um, the prayer group this week and to the committee. And he talks in chapter 15, the way Jesus talks in 14, Eugene translates, should I say, that idea of home. Um, Jesus says, if you obey my commandments, we will come and we will set up home in your life. That's what that's what Jesus says about the, the him, him and the Father coming to set up home right in our lives. And of course, when we get to, uh, to Pentecost Sunday, we will see that, that God does set up his, his, his home on earth is no longer the temple, but it's in his followers. Uh, chapter 14, Jesus said to the disciples, I'll set up home. And uh, Eugene uses that illustration for here, the abiding the abiding and the remaining. He says, um, make your home uh, on the vine as branches. The Holy Spirit moving amongst us so that we can abide in him. How do we abide? How do we abide? Well, the next few verses that we got wrong in the reading because uh, Boyd had already read what I didn't know was going to preach on as as the father has loved me so I've loved you now remain in my love if you keep my commands you will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love how do we abide how do we remain the idea is that we follow Jesus we are disciples we're not academic students Jesus doesn't say if you get the right theology, you will remain in my love. He doesn't say, if you have the right creed that you assent to, you will remain in my love. He doesn't say, if you can pick out the theological dodgy bits of the worship songs, you will remain in my love. He doesn't say, if you can out-argue this theologian or that theologian or whatever sectarian group of Christians you come from, the other group of sectarian Christians that they come from, he doesn't doesn't talk about arguing or intellect or academic ways. If you keep my commands, that will become the learning. We are disciples, not theological academic students. Now, don't get me wrong. I think we should read theology. And don't get me wrong. Of course, abiding in Jesus means that we read the scriptures to find out who he is and who his identity is so as that can permeate our lives. But Jesus himself says, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Remaining and abiding is about doing because we are disciples, following the guru, following the son of God, following God himself. And what about the fruit? Well, it seems to me um, I wanted to look at that just a little bit more uh, than it says in John chapter 15. So I had a little bit of a scan and I found the obvious. Of course, you're drawn to it without me even going there. Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Little bit like... If you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and your neighbour as yourself, that is the law kept if you do that. If the fruit of the Spirit exudes from you, then there's no law against that. And it's love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Now it seemed to me as I thought about that this week... Are those not the characteristics of the God we come to know in the pages of the scripture? As we read the Bible through from Genesis to Revelation, do we not find in that uh, narrative of salvation history, 
do we not find that God is a God of love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So if we abide on the vine, if we abide in Jesus, and God is the farmer, and Jesus is in God and we are in Jesus, then coming from that identity and coming from that energy and coming from that source will be the things of God. The people we meet this week, the people we engage with this week, no matter who they are, whether they're people it's easy to love or whether it's people that are difficult to love, whether it's people in our own homes that we would call our beloved or whether it is enemies across the community divides that we have in Belfast. Whoever it is that we engage with, we will keep the commandments of God as we love, as we bring joy, as we bring peace, as they see our forbearance and our kindness and our goodness and our faithfulness and our gentleness as we do it and our self-control. The attributes of God coming from the vine under the branches and then out into the rest of life. Because I think the fruit of the Spirit is personal. And I think the fruit of the Spirit is social. Ephesians chapter 5. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness and truth. James chapter 3. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. Then peace loving. Considerate. Submissive. Full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. This righteousness, as Walter Storff said at our very own lectern in Fitzroy, that justice that is righteousness, that social justice as well as personal righteousness. And we can't have a personal righteousness that feeds our own self-righteousness. The righteousness that comes from within us must feed the world in justice. These are acts of mercy. That's the good fruit of James. There's a personal fruit that comes from being a, a abiding in the vine and there's a social one that rolls out from that personal. I have to say as I preached this this week and I look back over the last 14 months um, I have seen an awful lot of fruit in a very difficult time in Fitzroy uh, it may just be me but the people I engage with some of you on a weekly basis as you respond to the sermons with uh, insight and personal story and personal testimony to me it seems to me that your engagements uh, on a personal level of abiding this last 14 months have been incredible and as I look around at what we've achieved, we had a committee meeting this week and uh, and just the, uh, the volunteering that's going on outside of Fitzroy, from Fitzroy through your partners in South Belfast and, and the giving and uh, that you've shown um, to, to those in need has been amazing. The fruit has been really, really powerful over COVID times. And actually, I, I'm, I'm hoping that that, 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 that uh, I'm not saying we didn't do it before COVID times, but there seems to be an intensity of fruit bearing in COVID times that I long to see being built upon, growing further, harvested more as we go. I can't help but think of that um, uh, uh, that avocado tree in Onialaku Primary School where I was stunned one morning when they said there's the avocado, now they have avocados and when we tell them that an avocado costs a pound, they, they go mad because they're free for all of them and um, so they give us an avocado and we think that's amazing or they give us 20 avocados um, but to see the avocado on the tree and then somebody looked across to further across on the same tree and already the flower of the next avocado was there there was two harvests in one tree and it seems to me that what I would find wonderful in my own life and in the life of Fitzers and in the life of our um, ministry and our fruit bearing into uh, South Belfast and beyond would be that the this fruit of Covid would be real right now but that we would see the next harvest already beginning to flower in our lives and in our Fitzroy community.
Not being patronising as we go into some pa- places of need in the lower Ormo or in Donegal Pass. Not at all being patronising. Ken Humphrey told me that the first time he went into work in lower Ormo, he thought he was going to come and bring Jesus. And he said he learned more about Jesus working in that community than he ever was able to give to them. No, we want to come and we want to be present. And we want to allow God to teach us through the places that he calls us to that there might be more fruit uh, grow within our own lives. My image is this today as I close, as I get ready to run for the coast. I can't help but seeing wastelands in our urban sprawl around Belfast. Secular wastelands, they may be called. Very needy wastelands, they may be called. Deprived areas, health, education, employment, incredible need. Just ask Brenda and all of you who volunteer at the food bank. We as Fitzroy are a community of faith in the middle of a wasteland. And I just couldn't help this week but see a branch a branch from Fitzroy overhanging. And if you can imagine a wasteland scene and suddenly there's an orange. There's a grape. There's an avocado. There's a pineapple. There's the fruit of God's spirit just hanging into the wasteland. I think that's what God calls us to. He says... I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I, the Lord of sea, sky. I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their dark bright who will bear my light to them whom shall I send here I am Lord is it I 
And for the week ahead, where I will be walking the Ballycastle beaches, the forest, and along the river, let us, wherever we are this week, have prayed upon us this blessing of benediction. Let's do it one to the other, wherever we are, and in our minds, let's pray it over those that we think about right now. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with each one of us this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.